Okay, this is a short video to uh, introduce a game that I wrote uh, to originally teach uh, binary and hexadecimal to uh, my students in a systems architecture course uh, by site. They had to get uh, 20 of these right in a row. So let's show it to you running. And it's uh, run from the command line and uh, you're expected to uh, look at a string of uh, binary digits and convert them to hexadecimal by sight. Uh, here's a reference up here for those that are a little rusty and you can always get the reference by hitting R or quit the program by a quit uh, Q. Uh, so go ahead and uh, I'll t test it out here. And I got one right. Let's see. Got another one right, and I'll just put in uh, all zeros. And you see it gets ones wrong. So it keeps track of uh, your longest run. So when you quit the program, it's going to print out a summary of your long of all your runs that you did. Uh, so you could see if you got a run of 20 correct, and it gives you the average time per try. Uh, so it'll actually uh, keep track of that every time you run. It doesn't remember it, uh, but that's the whole game. Uh, now I wanted to originally wrote this for Python 3.6, but I decided, well, if you if you want to run it, you may have 2.7. So how do I write my Python for both? And so in this program, I'm going to show you how to do that. Some there's some tricky parts, uh, especially with input. Uh, the code's available at GitHub uh, Gist, and uh, it's in the video description of this video. So you can get the link to that. And also, I'm going to ask you if you uh, could please subscribe to my videos. Uh, so I can keep getting funding. So let's jump into the code. Uh, so the code, uh, I have to do some imports here. Uh, so I import from future. This makes the normal division in 2.7 work in a floating version, which is how uh, the Python 3 and above work, and also gets the correct print function, because the old print function wasn't a function in Python 2.7. Uh, I'm going to use random range and time from these packages. I have to use sys to do my input, and we'll show you that. Uh, and you can read online, look up the uh, controversy over the 2.7 input, which actually did the eval, so it's a very dangerous way of doing input. So here I just do a convenient string which has all our hex digits. We're going to refer to almost like an array. Uh, this is a thing that if you give it a number, it'll give you a single digit in binary. So if you give it a 5, it gives you this. And you get the leading 0. Uh, let's see, I use the bin operator, their bin function. And you give it a number, it converts it to a string of binary digits, but it doesn't do leading zeros. So I add in 16 to always have a leading uh, digit out here that you don't see. But then I just take the uh, basically the end of the string here. So I cut off the first three characters. Uh, ref will print out this reference that you see over here in the output. So it prints this. So that, that goes through and prints that. Nothing fancy there. Uh, but to make it compatible with the old 2.7, uh, I had to use the format function instead of the new F string, which I like to use. And also to get this end with a space to work, I have to use the new print function, which is what the uh, import, the uh, future import will do. Uh, pick will pick our four digits that we're going to try to match. So it picks uh, four numbers from 0 to 15 inclusive. Then we have one play. This plays one round. So it gets the uh, uh, the individual bits. So it converts the digits that are passed, which are uh, done from pick. And it's going to give us uh, four bins which will be strings at this point. Uh, it's going to print those out, so that prints out these uh, four groupings here, followed by a question mark, so this becomes our prompt. And then uh, we're going to flush the standard out, so this is something I had to do to make it work in both points 2.7 and, and 3 doing tricks. And then we get the input using standard in read line. We convert it to uppercase and take the first four characters. Oops, so I'm converting to upper twice, so I don't need to do that. 
and, uh, and then we uh, if the guess is the first character of the guess is Q, we quit. If it's R, we uh, just return the reference to it. Uh, and then this is what we expect the user to type. So this is going to look up, uh, join, and build a string by looking up each of the uh, binary digits we want them to guess uh, from digits in our hex digit string, which is the one up here. So it's going to pick out the right character for what the user should type in and build a guess. Uh, so we'll have the string expected and the guess up here was the string that the user typed in. So if they're, they match, we return true. If they don't match, we return false. And in the case where we typed a Q or an R, we return a string for those. Uh, so then we have the main loop. So this is a little longer. Now the main loop, uh, what it does is it has a run count and a time elapsed. It's going to keep track of. So it gets the uh, the, the current time before it starts. Uh, it has a, a, a dictionary of the best runs. So if you have a run of 5 or a run of 16, it's going to store the best time for those. We'll print that out at the end. Uh, this is a method defined within main, which is to add a run. So it, you pass it the uh, count and the elapsed uh, for where you're at. And if count is not in best runs, it'll add it. Or if uh, the elapsed time is less than the, the, the best runs that are already in the count, it'll, it'll add it. Uh, and it. And it only adds it if the count is also greater than zero. So it won't add a count where you haven't scored anything correctly. So that stores the elapsed time uh, into count of runs. Okay, and this is our main game loop. So while true, it's going to run forever until you type Q, which would break out of the loop. Uh, it's going to do one play, so it's going to get this correct value. If the correct value is quit, it quits. If it's reference, it prints out the reference again. If it's correct, uh, if correct, that means that you won. Uh, then it's going to increment the run count. It's going to get the current time and get your elapsed time since the last time. Uh, and this elapsed time is the is the whole time since you you started getting correct ones. So it it counts the elapsed time for the entire number of runs you did where you keep getting correct answers. It resets the last time uh, and then it sets up for printing. So this is where it prints out your uh, average up here. So uh, like I have two runs with an average of 16.4 seconds per try. I'll uh, comment this slash, if we didn't do the conversion, uh, future conversion, this would do an integer divide and you wouldn't get the right number. Okay, so that's if it's correct. If it's not correct, uh, it's going to add the run. Assuming we've, we've just come off of uh, some runs that were correct, it's going to add that to our history. Uh, it's going to then set the run count and the elapsed time and the last time to zero and uh, to start a new set of new runs. It's going to print you got the answer wrong. So that's the main loop. When we're all done, if we had just come out of a bunch of correct runs and then we quit, we want to make sure we add that run. So that'll make sure to add that run to our history. And then it's just going to print out a recap of all the things in that history. So for C and best runs, it's going to print uh, the word recap. It's going to print this statement for every uh, number of runs we got correct. And this will then output it. So that's the format. That's the whole thing. It uh, runs it. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, look to the description for a link to the code and also a link to subscribe.